Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, this is going to be a video for my brothers and sisters here in the home state. Um, we have an ongoing legislative session and things are getting quite ugly there. And this is not the juiciest of topics. This is not one of these assault weapon bans. This is not one of these pre-purchasing licensing. That gets a lot of you worked up. This is an issue that some of you, I think, overlook because you think it might not really affect you, but when you stop and slow down and think about it for a second, it affects all of us and it's something we need to be really, really aware of. So today, let me get you up to speed on something that I think is rather nefarious, a little diabolical, and something you need to be aware of. So let's talk about how these two want to put every FFL in this state out of business. Okay, before we get going down the road, we are going down. Proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by Federal Way Discount Guns. That's right, Mo and all my good friends down there at Federal Way Discount Guns have been serving South King County now for over 30 years. They are located right here in Federal Way, Washington. Now listen, we, we know about some of the things going on with Federal Way Discount Guns. And if you wanna help them out again, we will put the link for that down below or you can just go ahead and scan this QR code. But right now what I wanna to talk to you about is, hey, have you ever thought that you might need to fill out a Form 1? Maybe about two weeks ago, you probably didn't when you went to bed one night, just the proud owner of an AR pistol, but suddenly you woke up the next day to find out Actually, you're the adoptive parent of a short barrel rifle. Well, that has many of us thinking maybe we need to do an e-form one, and we we'll probably have less than 120 days to do it. Well, Mo and all my good friends down there at Federal Way Discount Guns have a one-stop shop for you, full-service operation. Kiosk will get you through the whole thing to get all the printing done, all the paperwork done, everything you need to make that application. And listen, if you use the promo code Washington Gun Law, that is Washington Gun Law, all one word, they will give you 15% off. So for more information, visit them at federalwaydiscountguns.com. Okay, so the legislation that I'm talking about today is both Senate Bill 5078 and House Bill 1130. Now, House Bill 1130, if you went and looked that up right now on the legislative website, you're going to see that that thing is going nowhere. And one would think, oh, awesome, it's just a piece of legislation that's going to die on the vine. And it probably will. The problem is, is its companion bill over in the Senate, that being Senate Bill 5078, oh no, that has picked up a lot of steam. Now, this bill should just really be called the Put the FFL Out of Business Act of 2023. Now, to give you an idea of the steam that's picking up here, okay, it was in, it had a public hearing in the Senate Law and Justice Committee on January 17th. It went into executive session the next day. By the day after, January 19th, it passes out of executive session shockingly, with a recommendation to pass the legislation. It then gets assigned to the Ways and Means Committee. There is a public hearing already that's been conducted in the Ways and Means Committee on January 31st, and here we sit early February. So this thing is picking up steam. Now, what would this bill do? I said that this bill is essentially the Put the FFL Out of Business Act of 2023. And what I want you to imagine, to just kind of give you a landscape of what this would do, is I want you to think hypothetically if we were ever in a position in our time in our state where one state official just had broad, broad power and discretion to do whatever the hell they wanted to do for whatever reason. Not like that would actually happen. But if hypothetically it did, and, you know, let's say we ended up with, I don't know, schools closed for over a year, every bar, every restaurant, every concert venue, every sporting event completely shut down for no particular reason. Not like that would ever really happen. But you could see the type of uh, danger that we get in when one individual in the executive branch of government possesses power. What Senate Bill 5078, uh, of course, sponsored by uh, Senator Peterson and Manka Dengra. Uh, what this basically does is it would give your attorney general that same kind of unfettered discretion and power to just release holy hell upon the FFL industry. Because the way what the law would essentially do is it would take the definition of a public nuisance, which is found in RCW 7.84, greatly expand it, and then take all of these additional definitions that are newly created about things that go on kind of in the day-to-day -day business of firearms and now include them in that. What it means then is that the attorney general can go after all of the FFLs 
for anything that they dislike as a public nuisance. Now, you go after them civilly, you got to remember, you don't have all the same constitutional protections and things such as that. You also don't have the same burdens of proof. And what you do is you tap them out of money. The problem is, is these are all small businesses. There are many of them are independently owned businesses, and there's only so much you can tap them out before you run them out of business. And folks, here's the thing. If you think that this bill does not affect you, okay, because you're not in the FFL industry, let me remind you how reliant you are on the FFL industry. If you are any kind of a lawful and responsible gun owner here in the state of Washington, you absolutely are dependent upon the FFL industry. In addition to that, let us also remember that the FFL industry has for many, many years been at the forefront of the fight to preserve as best we can our Second Amendment rights in this state, okay? And that we owe it to them as members of that community to fight for them. Now, let me get you up to speed on how scary this this Senate bill is, okay? Because you need to understand what this bill does. I mentioned that it creates this massively expanded definition of public nuisance and then includes all of these activities that we see in firearms into that. So it allows the attorney general to do it. Now, when I said that it would give the attorney unfettered discretion, I wasn't, it wasn't hyperbole. Okay. I'm taking the language right from the bill. Consider this. Whenever the attorney general believes that any person may be in possession, custody, or control of any information which he or she believes to be relevant to the subject matter of an investigation, of a possible violation of this section, or may have knowledge of any information which the Attorney General believes relevant to the subject matter of such investigation, the Attorney General may, prior to the institution of civil proceedings thereon, execute in writing and cause to be served upon such a person a civil investigative demand requiring such person to produce such documentary material and permit inspection and copying to answer in any writing, written, interrogatories, to give oral testimony, or any combination of such demands pertaining to such documentary material or information subject to the provisions of RCW 19.86.110, which deals with some protective orders that you can get on certain things. So as you can see, it basically turns the Gestapo loose on the FFL industry. And then of course, if they do find any kind of violation, what could the attorney general do? Well, the bill specifically states, whenever it appears to the attorney general that a firearm industry member has engaged in or is engaging in conduct in violation of this section, the attorney general may commence an action to seek and obtain any remedies available for violation of this chapter and may also seek to obtain punitive damages up to the amount not to exceed three times the actual damages sustained by the state, reasonable attorney's fees, and costs of the action. So not only does the state get to recover all of the cost, but then they can triple it, okay? That is actually how this works. And for those of you not familiar with large pieces of state administrative litigation, you're gonna have big firms involved, you're gonna have a lot of lawyers involved, there's gonna be pleadings flying all over the place. It's gonna be hundreds of thousands of dollars in litigation. And if the attorney general prevails, let's say you have you know, a $100,000 bill in litigation, well, they're entitled to the attorney fees plus not to exceed three times that. So now they could ask for an additional $300,000 bringing the total sum to that particular FFL and fines, fees, assessments, and everything, $400,000 do now. But then it also gives any individual who wants to sue an FFL the ability to do so on a public nuisance. Why? Well, the bill says so. A person that has suffered harm as a result of a firearm industry's members act or omissions in violation of this section may commence an action to seek and obtain any remedies available for violation of this chapter and may also seek and obtain any one of the following. Okay, so this is in addition to what the Attorney General, because if there are individuals that are then harmed by what they believe to be these Public Nuisance Act, they too are entitled to injunctive relief, compensatory damages, punitive damages up to an amount not to exceed three times the actual damages sustained, and reasonable attorney fees, filing fees, and reasonable costs of the action. 
And then listen, we understand how there can be multiple degrees of separation from the time one act occurs before, between that and a harmful act. But if you want to talk about a strict liability statute, if you want to talk about, well, there was all sorts of other types of intervening causes here. No, no, no. That is not the way this bill is written, because I want you to pay very careful attention to what happens in the event that some other nut job goes out and does something unlawful with a firearm. A firearm industry member's conduct in violation of any provisions of this section constitutes a proximate cause of a public nuisance if the harm is reasonably foreseeable effect of the conduct notwithstanding any intervening actions, including but not limited to criminal actions by third parties. So you can see the viciousness here in which the attorney general would be allowed to go after the firearms industry. Now, I said at the start of this video that this is really should be entitled the Put the FFL Out of Business Act of 2023. And I also said that there was an amazing amount of hatred coming from the state legislature and the attorney general towards this particular industry. Once again, I'm not telling you people how to think. I'm giving you the stuff to think about. Why do I make this statement? Well, let's take a look at the very first few sentences of the legislative findings. The legislature finds that the irresponsible, dangerous, and unlawful business practices by firearm industry members contribute to the illegal use of firearms and not only constitute a public nuisance, as declared in Chapter 7.48 of the RCW, but that the effects of that nuisance exacerbate the public health crisis of gun violence in this state. And yet, if you go back and you take a look at the legislative history behind this bill, there is not a single instance that is cited. There is not any data to support this. This is the disdain that they have for the people in this industry that are preserving one of your inalienable rights. So the Senate bill is 5078. The House bill is 1130. It's not going anywhere. But Senate Bill 508 is significantly picking up steam and everybody, whether you're in the FFL industry or not, you need to pay attention and this bill needs to be stopped. Listen, you may have more questions about anything in the legislative session or what's left of your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, remember, you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, in the meantime, let's remember... Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.